So yesterday, you guys, I tried to get around to most groups and look at what you were thinking, and I explained some things to a lot of groups. I just want to kind of now, as a whole group, talk a little bit about what I think most groups came up with, sort of, uh, is you're going to have, let's just go through this, six cups, right? And each one of those six cups will have a different molar concentration, all the way from zero molar, which is just plain distilled water, to 0.2, to 0.4, all the way up to 1.0, all right, uh, molar solution. So then, uh, and then it says you get 100 milliliters of each. You're going to have 100 milliliters in each cup of each one of these varying concentrations. And then most people were able to tell me that we should put a little cylinder of potato, remember the potato um, co uh, cork borers there to get your cylinders. Um, I will tell you this, I think um, in my experience, uh, we get more accurate data, I've done it both ways, but more accurate data if you put multiple cylinders per cup. Uh, and, uh, and so therefore, I would suggest maybe putting three pieces of potato in. What that means though is that you don't have to take three initial masses, you can mass all the potato pieces together. So you're going to take um, the initial mass, you're going to get three little pieces of potato, a little cylinders of potato here. You're going to mass these all together and get their initial mass, and then you can put them into the, the solution. And then this one, you're going to have three different slices of potato. and get its initial mass today. And so therefore, you're going to have to have a way to write this. So you're going to have to have for all the different solutions and the initial and the final mass there. You're going to get the final tomorrow. And then you're going to have, so having three in each um, get will give us more accurate results. And so it's kind of, uh, because we're just measuring the same solution, we can get all the mass together. So you don't have to do it all separately. Okay, so now remember the overall thought is to get the water potential of the potato. So, <coughs> so what we really want to do is see what solution is isotonic to the potato cells. If this, the solution is isotonic to the potato cells, what are you going to expect the percent change in mass to be? Zero, right? So you may get lucky and one of these solutions will be in an isotonic solution. The potatoes will not get a zero percent. Uh, will get a 0% mass change. Most likely, it's going to be um, uh, not at exactly one of these molarities. And so what does this mean? So for instance, for these two cups here, uh, I went through this example with several groups yesterday. Um, let's say these two cups the, in the potatoes gained mass, so the water went in, and so the final mass is higher than its initial mass. But then from the 4.4 .4 to 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1, let's say they start losing mass. So what does that tell me um, is that, that tells me that somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4, that molarity, is the isotonic solution because it gained here and lost here. So the 0% change is going to be somewhere in between there. So how do I figure that out? Um, so, so in here, somewhere is going to be the isotonic solution. All right, but we don't know what molarity that is, but isotonic solution would be in and out equally, and so therefore a 0% um, <coughs> mass change, right? And so, so rather than going, um, oh, it's a little closer to 0.4, so let's go with 0.4 as being the isotonic solution. We want to be a little bit more exact with that, and this is where um, uh, tomorrow when we get our data, we can do a graph where, if, especially if you have some that gained and some that lost, we're going to have to put our, uh, do a graph and do our zero axis kind of in the middle here so we can have positive percent change numbers and negative. And then you can put your molarities here, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and so on. And so you're going to have data about the percent change for these data points for 0, 0.2 and so on. And so then you can make a line graph. And then between, let's say this is the 0.2, mark and this is the point four where it gained and lost, when you make your line, you can get a more accurate estimation about what molarity would it be 0% mass change and what is the exact isotonic solution. 
all right? And so that's what we want to do, is, and that's how we're going to figure that out. So today, we want to set up something similar to this um, so that we can get data for these data points and figure out that isotonic solution for tomorrow. That makes sense? Okay. So, uh, so what I'm, <coughs> as a group, like I said, I got around to, to most lab groups. You may need to convene a little bit, talk a little bit about um, things with your group if you need to figure out what you need to do. But for those groups who are ready to go, let me show where everything is um, so that by the time you leave, you have it set up um, and, the, and the potatoes are going to sit overnight. So, so I have up here um, eight beakers because there's eight lab groups. Eight beakers filled with a little over 300 milliliters of a one molar sucrose solution. And yesterday we went over how to dilute that, right, um, with water. And so, so therefore, to get your 0.2, 0.4, and so on molar solutions, uh, you're going to need distilled water for that. So the distilled water is in the same container it was for the last lab. And I'm just going to have you grab a 400 milliliter beaker out of here and just fill it up. You only need about 300 milliliters of distilled water, so you can take that back to your table. Um, and then you can use the graduated cylinders up here to dilute it. So for instance, yesterday I went over the 0.2 molar one. So, um, so in the graduated cylinder, you can put, you put 20 milliliters of the one molar sucrose, and then you can pour in 100 milliliters to bring it up to 100, and then therefore you have your 0.2. And then you can put it into a cup. You're gonna need six cups here. And they're Sharpies, so you want to label your cups with not only molarity, but maybe somebody's initials or so on, so you can get yours back tomorrow. And so then you can put that solution in there, and then you make the other solutions and so on. A heads up on the making the solutions in these graduated cylinders. I um, told second hour to wash these when they were done. I don't know that I would trust every lab group to have washed these. So this is going to be a problem, especially if you're measuring out 100 milliliters of distilled water and they didn't wash it and there's sucrose in there. You've just screwed up your distilled water experiment. So I put a beaker of soapy water in there. If I were you, I would just do a quick little wash down. All right, for my, um, so um, little, little tidbit there. All right, so um, that's what I would do if I were you. All right, so then the potatoes are right here. Let me move your last. Potatoes are right here, and remember you're making a disc of potato. Remember we're cutting. So I have, I brought a nice knife here, all right? The knife, be careful while cutting. Knife stays here, all right? Right here, all right? So don't, don't take it away. And so you have your potato. You need about, um, just we're measuring really in mass, so, but you don't want really small potatoes, so make it about yay big, all right, your, your disc. So you don't want the ends, remember, so you want to make a disc, and then the ends you can just throw away. I'm not going to take them home for dinner or anything. Like that. So, so you just need the disc, and then over here is the potato cores, and you can make your discs or your little cylinders that way. Um, but the knife stays up here. And then the, I also have over here uh, the little um, massing cups here. And then we figured out first hour, they, they asked me, can we have some pipettes? So I'm going to leave them up here. The first hour was having trouble like pouring from here and getting exactly the right um, volume. And so therefore, if you want to use pipettes um, to help you to get the right volume um, more exact, you can do that. Just make sure that you don't use a pipette that you use sucrose with in this, your distilled water because then you've contaminated everything. All right, so just maybe have a sucrose one and a distilled one. Okay? Um, and then I think that's it. All right, so I think that's a minute. Well, just remember to use the same balance for everything in the lab that's today and tomorrow and all your, your groups, all right, um, and so on. So, so I'm going to give you time to be with your group, figure out if you know what you're doing and what you need to do, and when you're ready, you can get started. Yeah, this is going to be washed out because I think we're all